we're following breaking news just coming into CNN right now. Attorneys for former President Donald Trump say they're unable, unable to get a bond to pay the $464 million fraud judgment, calling it, and I'm quoting now, a practical impossibility. CNN's Kara Scannell is joining us from New York right now. Kara, what can you tell us? Uh, walk us through what this means. So Trump's lawyers have informed the appeals court today that they are unable to get anybody, an insurance company, an underwriter, to help them post this bond, the $454 million for Trump alone, the rest to cover his sons. And what they say is that they've approached 30 insurance underwriters, some of these big, gigantic companies that you know, and they say that none of them are willing to do it. As you said, they're calling it a practical impossibility. You know, one of the reasons that they say is an issue here is that some of these insurance companies Companies have internal limits that they won't issue a bond for more than $100 million. And some of the biggest names that you can think of in the insurance world also will not underwrite a bond and take property, which is what Trump has to put up. They want cash. They want securities, stocks, bonds, something that is what's a liquid, easy-to-sell asset. They don't want property. And so that is the problem that Trump has run into in trying to come up with this massive amount of money, half a billion dollars. You know, these bond companies, too, they also want... Uh, their own, uh, I guess you could call it, uh, you know, insurance on it. They want extra money than just what the bond is so that they can, you know, cover this as it, as it plays out. This bond is to uh, stop the New York Attorney General's office from seizing the property while the appeal of the judgment and the case goes forward. So they've been asking, the, uh, the Trump's team has been asking the appeals court to allow them to not have to post this bond um, until the appeal is over. They're saying that Trump has properties that are worth more than the judgment in this case. Uh, it's just something that the insurance companies won't take. So they're saying that the attorney general's team um, should, will be able to collect uh, on this judgment if it stands. And they could do so by seizing some of the properties, which the attorney general's office said they're ready to do. But they're still asking the appeals court here for more time. And that's why we're seeing this new information come out today, saying they're unable to post the bond of this magnitude. They can't get anyone to underwrite it because it is just a, a, a large amount and particularly a large amount for one individual. Well, so Kara, what comes next in this process? So now it is before the appeals court. There's been briefing on this. It's up to this New York State appeals court to decide whether to allow Trump to move forward with the appeal and stop the attorney general's office from seizing properties to give them this time to, to have the court case play out. If the court says that Trump um, does not get this stay. Trump's side is asking them to allow them to put their ruling on hold so they can appeal to the highest appeals court in New York State. That Those will be decisions for the New York appeals court to decide. And of course, the New York Attorney General's office has opposed this. They want the appeals court to allow them to enforce the injudgment now if Trump cannot post that bond. Well, All right, Kara, we'll stay in close touch with you. We'll see what happens. A significant develop, of development indeed. Hey, Renato, let's start with you because you've represented it. You've represented rather and prosecuted large real estate developers before. What happens if they can't get a bond? Well, if they can't get a bond, uh, collection efforts go forward, which, uh, first of all, can be expensive, okay? It's a, there's a court process where uh, the, the New York Attorney General is gonna be trying to collect that judgment, could potentially put liens on properties, uh, in, in, you know, essentially entering that order into uh, uh, various other proceedings, for example. So that would potentially be an issue for Trump. Uh, he doesn't, if he's already got uh, his real estate highly encumbered with loans and so on, having to deal with collection efforts and pay attorneys to fight off collection efforts is yet another problem that he doesn't want to have to deal with. And his attorneys say that uh, he approached 30 underwriters to back the bond. Does that make sense to you that they would all say no? Well, in my experience, um, real estate developers tend to be very highly illiquid. They tend to be highly leveraged. They tend to have all sorts of loans. They, you know, they might have a revolving line of credit. They may have uh, various loans and personal guarantees out there. Um, however, uh, what I will say is that you know this is not a complete surprise to Donald Trump. It's not like the New York Attorney General's case happened over the course of minutes. It happened over the course of years. Uh, and Trump could anticipate a potential judgment. And the fact that he hasn't prepared by refinancing and making selling properties and so on suggests that he may be less wealthy than he has portrayed himself to be. Oh, on that note, thank you for um, 
teeing up Kristen Holmes, who covers the Trump campaign for us. Kristen, you uh, know very well that a big part of Donald Trump's identity is how wealthy he is. And the idea that he can't pay this money, I mean, it wouldn't be out of this uh, world for you or I or most normal people not to pay half a billion dollars and not to have that lying around in our bank account. But it might be different when it comes to how Donald Trump thinks he's perceived. Yeah, and Dan, I just want to start by saying that you should know that there are a lot of Trump allies who watch your show and they've been texting me with the argument of, one, most billionaires are not liquid. This right. is not that surprising. The other, other argument saying this is about the insurance companies, this insane amount, this is their words, not mine, in terms of the bond, these insurance companies can't get that much money, that much collateral. So there is an argument here among Trump world. But as you know, Donald Trump himself has painted himself, his entire image, not just politically, but also before that, his brand on being a billionaire. And that is why this case was so personal for him in the first place, was the idea that that everything he had built was essentially on a lie, was it was fraudulent, that he wasn't really this rich, that he had inflated those numbers. That's why you saw him so fascinated and so intent on being part of this case, sitting in that courtroom, listening to these various witnesses, because it is to his personal brand. It also goes to his political brand. This idea that I built myself up as a billionaire and I could do that for you too, goes away if you can't afford to pay this kind of money. And let me just go back to Renato on this, because you did mention uh, that most real estate developers are not liquid. They can't just write a half a billion dollar check. I think that is probably true for most billionaires, although I don't certainly have that experience to really know firsthand. Uh, but if they have assets, the question is, you kind of said maybe if he prepared, he would start to sell things off. I mean, is that a, a real possibility that he might have to do that? We'll just say that in other circumstances, other matters that I've handled, uh, that is what's happened. Essentially, uh, real estate developers refinance properties, sell properties, do what they have to do to get cash. Now, uh, candidly, I've never been in a case where a real estate developer needed uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions. It's only been in the tens of millions. Uh, but nonetheless, for those real estate developers, it was a very significant ask, right? To come up with that mm -hmm. kind of money if you have hundred, well, if your net worth is in the hundreds of millions. And so, but for Donald Trump, nonetheless, he could have anticipated this and sold a property in the midst of the New York Attorney General's proceeding. And I really would say one of two things is true here. Either he doesn't have the wealth that he suggests he has, or he didn't plan whatsoever, uh, you know, was so blind to what was occurring that he essentially left himself at a position where now uh, he's going to incur significant costs and hassle and, and a disruption to his business that was unnecessary.